Hey, good afternoon, everybody. How is everybody doing? Good. Thumbs up. All right. Hey, so uh, this is a pretty compelling story, and I find that the power of the ServiceNow platform is best told by what our customers do. Um, we're joined today by somebody who has sat in the middle of ongoing change, has advised uh, the people he serves on how the platform could be leveraged to accomplish some pretty amazing things in a short period of time. So before we introduce him, uh, my name is Gus. I am the director of sales for Creator Workflows. So anytime you or your customers are building applications and integrating those applications uh, from ServiceNow uh, externally, you get to talk to us. So today, I'm joined by Bob. Bob, do you want to do a quick introduction of yourself? Sure, good afternoon. My name is uh, Bob Jennings. Um, I work in an organization called the Defense Counterintelligence and Security Agency. Um, I work within our chief strategy office. So it has many responsibilities, uh, one of which is to drive transformation across a newly formed agency. And there's one person that you see on the screen here who's not with us right now. He got called away for some work. Uh, Kyle is the link between Bob and ServiceNow, um, and he serves as the account management in that capacity. So if you have any questions about this story, just let us know. Um, raise your hand when we come to the questions, uh, question and answer section at the end. Um, and we certainly appreciate your time. So yeah. thank you. All right, um, Bob, I think it would probably be best to start with uh, a little bit of a story or an explanation of who DCSA is and what are the missions you support and, and really what's the function of your organization? Sure, great. Um, so we like to refer to ourselves as the nation's gatekeepers. And, and before I get started, uh, my colleagues, my fellow gatekeepers, if you can raise your hands, please. Gatekeepers. They're going to ask all the hard questions. They're going to see how good I do later. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, um, I, I have a few notes just because I want to cite some fun facts, but uh, um, I generally won't follow that for the most of the day. Um, but we were an organization that, that was uh, formed in the midst of COVID. Uh, we, we were born in, uh, I want to say, 2019. Uh, and as the nation's gatekeepers, uh, we're responsible for vetting personnel, uh, clearing industry, uh, conducting counterintelligence, uh, selected counterintelligence, not, not all counterintelligence, uh, and training uh, the, 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 everybody who is in the gatekeeper role on, on the various functions that they perform, be it as a, an agent or as a, a somebody who's responsible for protecting critical technology or, or protecting against uh, uh, foreign ownership, uh, control, and interest. Uh, our organization was, uh, again, created during the midst of COVID. Um, I call that to your attention because it's an important part of our story. Uh, we also were an organization that was, was bringing in uh, several organizations from across not only the Defense Department, but also the rest of the federal government. So, so we, we were tasked with bringing in, in several organizations with several different processes, several different cultures. Uh, several different ways of doing business um, into a single unified organization in the midst of a pandemic. At the same time, we were responsible for uh, making sure that we did not break what we call break mission. Um, so just to give you an idea, some of the things that we do, uh, anybody here have a security clearance? Right. So there's a good chance that, that you had a, a relationship with our agency in one form or another. So we conduct uh, approximately 2.4 million, uh, million background investigations on a, on a yearly basis. Uh, if you're familiar with the concept of continuous vetting or trusted workforce, uh, we enrolled more than 3 million people into trusted workforce. Um, we're responsible for giving uh, clearances to 12,500 uh, facilities throughout the United States. Um, we were responsible for, for certifying for compliance from a cybersecurity perspective over 5,500 uh, IT systems. Um, we're responsible for conducting as many as 3,400 reviews of individual organizations. At the same time, we're responsible for protecting critical technology, uh, uh, m managing against uh, uh, foreign ownership control. We do that with a workforce of approximately uh, uh, 10,000 people, government and contractor, spread across about 160 offices throughout the United States. So that's DCSA in a nutshell, and, and uh, there's myself and others are more than happy to tell you a little bit more about what we do. Um, our acronym is probably not well known. Um, interestingly, as a gatekeeper, we somewhat you know, have an important role that we want folks to know about, but we also, uh, as our former director used to say, um, they're, they're never gonna make a movie about DCSA, um, but we play an important role in national security. That's, uh, 
that's true, I guess. I don't know. So, um, you know, it's, it was interesting. So Kyle and I were talking a couple months ago, and he was like walking me through the story of DC, DCSA and its formation. And I was thinking to myself, well, how can this newly formed organization have workflow issues? How can they have issues with disaggregated work when um, there's no prerequisite for that problem? And so interesting enough, as I started to learn a little bit more about how they had all these different organizations they had to pull together, not just the processes, but the culture, they need, these, they need a few key components. Those components are repeatable, reportable, and reliable workflows that provide insights and analytics so they can be uh, more efficient over the course of time. And some of the things that we've seen Bob champion and do within his organization with the support of his peers uh, is nothing short of impressive. So um, Bob, it's, you've chosen ServiceNow as your low and no code platform. What are some of the reasons that you've uh, chosen ServiceNow and leaned heavily into that? Sure. Um, so, so um, first off, let me start with uh, we we're an agency that really, from a uh, in, in a corporate setting, you know, found ourselves where we grew extremely quickly. Um, the, the agency that, that all the DCSA f uh, uh, kind of fall, fell under was a small organization called the Defense Security Services. Um, it was about an 800 person organization with a very small footprint. So we were almost like a, a company, if you will, that just grew tenfold overnight. Uh, and so we recognized that as the agency was coming together that the way we were doing things under what we call DSS was not going to work in the future. Uh, so we really had a, a business need, not unlike I've heard in forums like this from commercial clients that, that you may have, where they talk about having explosive growth, and then having a challenge of keeping up, um, keeping up with the pace of change, keeping up with the pace of technology, et cetera. So there, therein lied our kind of our fundamental business problem. And of course, you're all fed, so um, how did we get to service now? Um, through a competitive process. Uh, so so uh, our organization had seen various parts of DCSA and our predecessor organizations using service now, but they were kind of just very much siloed activities because we had different organizations that, that had been experimenting that fell under this one umbrella. Um, so what, what, the, what the agency did, what my predecessors did, was uh, basically did an analysis. Right? We wanted to have a low-code application platform. Um, we wanted to have really a lot of what ServiceNow has to offer. You all know you have competitors. Um, we, we basically went through a, a, a process to figure out what was the best fit for our agency. We ultimately landed on ServiceNow. And then, of course, we went through the, the procurement actions to, to bring, bring the contract in place. Yeah, I mean, ServiceNow is immensely valuable. But I think one of the things that make it most valuable is your ability to re-engineer and then consistently reimagine. Um, getting good is one thing, but constantly getting better is a totally different story. And that's one of the things that I get the opportunity to sit back and witness is our federal customers constantly improve through the use of tools, um, tools that I'm passionate about in the developer side of things. So um, would you be so kind as to talk about some of DCA, DCSA's guiding principles um, and how you maintain a responsible development uh, methodology on, on a low and no code platform, and you know, I, before you before you do, I, I think one of the cornerstones of this, and it is a little bit of a commercial, is governance from the ground up, purpose built. Everybody wants to talk about a lot of builders. A lot of builders bring a lot of opportunity, but managing that opportunity at scale is pretty difficult. And that's where ServiceNow, being a role based system. If you trust us to deliver the right services to the right people at the right time, based on who they are, their job, their role, their function, then you trust us to turn that inside out and deliver the right developer tools to the right builders and the right apps at the right time. So Bob, if you would, just kind of share a little bit about what some of uh, your guiding principles are with the platform. Sure. Uh, so, so first off, uh, over there in my backpack, I'm one of those geeky kind of people that carries around our agency strategic plan. Um, I should have brought it up here so I could <laughs> wave it all to you, but nobody would have cared. Um, as a newly formed agency, uh, uh, because it's required by law, I might add, we built a strategic plan. Uh, we had a, a, a couple of goals. Um, one was tied to this uh, notion of having a digital ecosystem. 
So really looking at the various technologies that, that DCSA basically inherited and, and how to turn that into something a little bit more state-of-the-art. Um, also a goal, which again kind of was factored into the analysis I mentioned earlier, of operational effectiveness. Um, so using those two strategic goals that our director had set, um, uh, we leveraged that to really kind of say, okay, now do we do, what do we do with what we have with ServiceNow? So it was a, almost uh, nine months ago, uh, we were out in Vegas at the, the Vegas conference, whose name I can't recall by memory, Knowledge. sorry. Knowledge, thank there you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Irony. And, and uh, uh, we really, you know, you know, sometimes they say, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And uh, um, so in this case, that's not the case. Uh, uh, myself and a bunch of others through the various workshops and the after hour activities said, we need, to, we need to take another look at this. Like, we need to see how can we can drive transformation. So I, I think I said something obnoxious and then suddenly we coined this term. We need to have delighted, digitally enabled gatekeepers. And so tied to these strategic goals and we need to make sure that, that everybody that has an experience with DCSA has the best experience possible. Um, and we use that as a, as a cornerstone to build a roadmap, which really gets into what your, your guiding principles are. And so we set out to do a couple of things. So first off, there was, Many activities going on across the agency with ServiceNow, and, and uh, we saw a lot of enthusiasm with it, but what we didn't see, it was all being kind of tied together and nested to our strategic plan. Uh, so that's what we tried to do is like, okay, how do we start funneling everybody towards what the agency is doing? Um, and this is where we, we got into to building a roadmap. Uh, we made a commitment to, to build a roadmap uh, within a 90-day period. Um, our goal was to, hopefully that's not me, um, our goal was to have a roadmap uh, uh, developed and presented by, by Memorial Day of last year. And we didn't build a roadmap that you may think about where we said in this release we're going to have X, in this release we're going to have Y. Uh, our roadmap was a, was a little bit of a different approach. And, and so what we came up with, first off, there are things that, that are, we want to do that are very transformational at the agency that can only be driven from a top-down perspective. So what we call top-down transformation. We said, let's take our most skilled developers and, and let them help drive some of the top-down transformation. Um, though I mentioned we had a, 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 a fairly significant budget and a lot of employees, so you all can appreciate this as government people, um, we also had a lot of vacancies. Uh, so we were not fully manned as an agency, and uh, the comptroller types in government were saying, gee, you got a lot of vacancies, you're not spending a lot of money, we'll just take that money back. So we really had this, like, we got to get these positions filled, right? We need these positions for our mission. Um, but when we looked at all of our HR processes, we, we saw that they were not as optimized as they could be, somewhat of a function of the merger. So we really took an effort to, to focus on as a kind of a cornerstone, um, kind of leveraging the HRSD capabilities and, and really looking at some top-down HR transformation. Uh, and Kylie's here somewhere, unless she left. Um, but we worked with our HTMO office, with our program office, with my office, really to kind of drive that, that transformation effort. And we're on the cusp of actually getting all that capability, um, at least a, a first set of it fielded here in the next couple of weeks. Um, the second thing we did is uh, uh, we continue to say, where, where from a value perspective that, that can we drive the, the biggest end-to-end -end transformation? Let, let's find out what all those things are and then really start thinking about what will it take. Uh, so, so we've identified a, a, a number of activities that, that we're gonna follow through with right after we, we get some of this HR transformation going on. The other thing we recognized is, is uh, and as much as we wanted to have the delighted digitally enabled work uh, uh, gatekeepers, we needed to, to spend a little bit more time on, on, on a, to use an industry term, upskilling the workforce. Um, and not so much because uh, we had skills for sure. Our program office and our, and our IT people certainly understand what, what these capabilities are and how to use them. But what we had this realization is that the customers, the gatekeepers, the people who are gonna be leveraging these business processes may not. Uh, so so we, we, we took a very concerted effort to what can we do to upskill the workforce. And uh, one of the things that we did is uh, we, we, we said, well, we need to make sure that the people at DCSA actually have a clear understanding of, of what it is in this product that we built. Um, one of the things that when I went to Knowledge last year that I had heard that really uh, resonated with me was when the CEO of the company got up in one of the plenaries and said, you know, the biggest feedback I ever get from all of our clients is, gee, I didn't know ServiceNow could do that. 
Um, so we wanted to, if we're making the investment, the point was we're making the investment, let's leverage the investment, let's make sure everybody uh, uh, understands what that investment is. And so the way we attempted to upskill is uh, we came up with some of those Vegas things again uh, with what we called um, Innovation Day. Um, so so uh, um, you, some of you may know them as uh, uh, the industry term is a hackathon. Um, we threw that word around for a while, but because of the mission of our agency, and if you look at the history of our agency, we have a lineage to an OPM breach. So, you know, hackathon <laughs> is probably not the best term. Um, so we came up with the idea of an innovation challenge. And, and what we did is we brought people from the workforce, um, not only in our headquarters offices, but throughout the country, our program office people, and then our, our ServiceNow partners and some of our contract developers. And we basically said, bring us a business problem, um, and let's see if we can uh, take that problem, uh, kind of noodle through it, and, and get a capability delivered in, in uh, what I said, days and, and weeks versus months and years. Uh, so we use that as an opportunity to, to not only upskill the workforce, but also to show the art of the possible. Uh, and and uh, to, to make it a, a little bit fun, uh, we also decided because uh, because we could. Well, let's have let's 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 uh, let's just not have a uh, let's let's. Let's have a contest, right? So, so we, we said, we're gonna call this the Gatekeeper Innovation Challenge. Um, we're gonna have, and kind of, kind of pull on like a Shark Tank or kind of in some of the TV shows you might watch. We're gonna have a panel of judges. We're gonna have all these teams come in. We're gonna have them present their business problem, how they fix it, display it, and then the judges are gonna uh, uh, decide which one was, quote unquote, the winner. Uh, so, so we did all that. I think we, 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 we've, we've done that a couple of times. Uh, not surprisingly, we, we made a few mistakes along the way. Um, we learned some things that worked and didn't work. We're still learning. Um, but what we ended up doing is really getting our, our more integration, um, more understanding, and, and more, more acceptance of the art of the possible. Um, and then the, the, one of the things I also picked up from ServiceNow is it's Mark Hogan over here. I think I was in a meeting and, and uh, I said, you know, we gotta eat our own dog food. And we always say that in government. And, and uh, Mark said, you know, Bob, at ServiceNow, we don't eat dog food, we drink champagne. <laughs> I'm saying, okay, works. So as part of the innovation challenge, I said, okay, let's have some fun with this. We're gonna have a trophy. So we, we call it the Innovator's Cup. We introduced it at the first day. We put it out on the, the table and we said, whoever wins, the, whoever wins the year is gonna get the trophy and there's gonna be a special surprise. Uh, and and uh, we, we, we did all that. We went through the challenges. We had all the briefings. We picked the winner. We handed out the trophy kind of Stanley Cup style and then we broke out a big old magnum of champagne and said, let's celebrate. Uh, so so uh, that was a big thing of our roadmap of really, again, kind of top-down transformation, looking at other opportunities, upskilling the workforce, bringing in this idea of an innovation challenge. And what we're really trying to get there, which is the last part of our roadmap, is how can we find solutions to those everyday nagging issues that all of us in civil service get frustrated about, right? And it's like, why can't we just fix this, right? So we're trying to do enabling through a low-code application platform, trying to move us towards citizen development for the easy stuff and let the pros handle the hard stuff. So I, that, was a very, that was very eloquent. I don't think you're doing it justice, though. <laughs> um, so let me say this to someone who sat on the outside of the Gatekeeper Innovation Challenge. Um, it was one of the most impressive things is the excitement that was in the room for this. Um, you could tell that you had people who were invested in positive steps forward. They were invested in outcomes, and they were invested in upskilling themselves. Uh, the energy in the room was palpable, and one of the things that we did as ServiceNow is we actually produced a video. And I'm not going to show the video, so don't worry. Oh. Um, but the video was about bringing some level of excitement to what's, what's going on. Because if you tell people, like, hey, we're doing this thing, it's kind of like a hackathon. Uh, and it's just going to change everything. I'm like, hey, I've been in IT for 10 years. I know it's not that long, but I've heard that every year for the last 10. People make these grand, open-ended promises about how you change culture. And the way that it was done over here is something that's sustainable and impactful. So not only did you force competition, you brought, you forced competition around uh, common workplace narratives that everyone can identify with. And then you, you continue to maintain this workshop uh, innovation challenge type of narrative, not one time, not two times, not three times, not four, 
but in a regular cadence. And you do that because this goes back to one of the last jobs I had um, at Pivotal. And Pivotal was very popular for how they taught people to revolutionize their own software development challenges. And one of the things I learned there is you don't change culture by doing it at one time and expecting success. You change culture by finding a champion, teaching that champion, giving them the flag to carry, going with them to the next battle. And then when they're competent and coherent and what, and what they're advocating for, that's your front line. You keep pushing it forward. From there, you start to see people bring joy into the workplace because they can accomplish things. There's problems in mind every day, and I work for ServiceNow. I got to go between this system and that system and do this in email and send a text over here, a team's message there. It's a mess. You guys are no different. But empowering users to take technology into their hands to create something, to manifest something, it's powerful, and that's how you change an organization. It's all about the culture. And I don't think you did it justice because it truly was uh, my, I get goosebumps when I think about it. When I watch the video to see what Hogan and Kyle orchestrated in conjunction with the leadership from Bob and Tim and others was, um, again, nothing short of, of impressive. And, and I personally learned a lot from that. So thank you. Okay. So how have some of the outcomes that you've delivered and some of the ways you've engaged with your key stakeholders for a lot of back office type functions. Mm -hmm. um, how has it strengthened those relationships? Maybe it's the understanding that people have of the platform, their ability to bring better requirements to you. Maybe it's just, hey, leaning into or IT teams and having trust and faith that you can deliver their need because you now understand it and by way of the gatekeeper challenge, they now understand you. But what are some of the things that have really just like really strengthened that bond and brought you guys together? So I think th 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 to kind of expand a little bit more on the gatekeeper challenge, since you said I didn't do it enough justice, uh, keeping in mind that we were, we were coming out of a pandemic, we also saw this as an opportunity to, to answer your question here, is to get our workforce to know each other better. Again, we came together in the middle of a pandemic, so the people in the Omaha office have never met anybody else at the agency. So one thing about, you know, and it, it sounds kind of Mickey Mouse, but I think sometimes we just forget it, particularly in a world where all this technology, the value of a face-to-face -face interaction cannot be understated. Um, to get people in the room together to solve a problem um, and to recognize and, and uh, it takes time, right, to make sure everybody's actually agreeing to solve the, the, the same problem. Um, I actually also am responsible for our continuous process improvement program at the agency. Uh, so I actually had, was in a, in a good spot to, as we train our green belts and black belts as part of a Lean Six program to, to really ad uh, understand what kind of the problems are out there and, and how to bring people together. Um, so just the notion of, of bringing people together for a common purpose is, is probably the first step of, of, of uh, uh, creating a relationship. Um, me personally, I, I like to describe myself as annoyingly collaborative. Um, so like I, like want, I want everybody's input and I want everybody to actually to disagree with each other so we all come up with the right solution together. Uh, so to just kind of get everybody aligned on let's, let's be collaborative, let's understand everybody's intention, let's work together to solve the problem. Um, and then from there, it's really, really understanding like, like what, what is the art of the possible. Uh, our objective was to, to, to have a create an environment where the problem is sitting outside the door that we could automate through ServiceNow or, and other technology would greatly exceed demand, that, that we, we were demonstrating to our workforce that there's, there's, a, there's a way out of some of these bureaucratic, bureaucratic processes that are annoying and inefficient that, that, that they would want to come to us as opposed to taking the approach where corporate kind of comes down and tells everybody how things are going to get fixed. Um, so I think, you know, at the end of the day, the partnership in terms of just uh, 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 the biggest thing is getting people in the room together. Second biggest thing is taking the time and space to, to build the energy. Um, third thing is, is, is just, get, just uh, you, you got to try things, right, and kind of put it out there, see what works and what doesn't. Um, there's, a, there's an untold story about all these innovation challenges we've, we've had, which is the part of things that worked well and those where we, um, in the hot wash every, 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 after every event, it's like, well, that didn't work. What are we going to do next? time, right? And just not, you know, just keep plugging at it to keep getting better and better and better. I like to call it, and my colleagues know this, let's get next level, right? And so let's, let's get something done. Let's see what worked, what didn't. Let's go next level. 
So we've been in here for 25 minutes now, and we haven't mentioned a single product. All we've talked about are outcomes. All we've talked about are service now. Mm -hmm. I think that is uh, one, of the, one of the strongest ways to, uh, to advocate for technology, and that's when you know it works, is when the products and the SKUs are behind the scenes. ServiceNow is the catch-all to solve problems. Um, and it's, it's been in a, a fruitful and productive relationship for both sides. Uh, I represent a, a product. I represent a business unit. I don't represent the link between ServiceNow and our customers. That's what Kyle and Mark do. But I also do get the opportunity to sit back and watch core sellers, that's what we call core sellers, that link, um, and customers across the entire spectrum run their businesses in different ways. And one of the things that I've grown to absolutely love about working with Mark and Kyle is the strength of partnership that they have with their customers. And when my peers come to me and they're like, hey, what's going on over here? I'm like, hey, don't talk to me. Go talk to those guys. They've got it figured out. I'm just, a, I'm just an observer. I'm, I'm grateful to be around it. But their customers are equal participants in that. And you know, Bob, I, I think it's important that we all find ways to get better. ServiceNow as sellers, customers as customers, to hear from people who have uh, really figured this thing out. So I was hoping you could expand and spend a few minutes just talking about the importance of that relationship with ServiceNow, um, what you have learned about how to get the most out of your account teams, and, and just really where, um, where, why it's important to you guys. Sure. Um, so I've been in defense procurement and, and IT space for a long time, and, and some of the DCSA folks have heard me say this. Um, one of the frustrations throughout my career has been when the government goes off and, and buys a, makes a huge IT investment, and, and then one of the first things they do is uh, um, stop talking to the, the software vendor. Uh, and, and, and as a defense guy, I like to say, you know, if we buy a plane from Boeing, the first step we do after we take delivery of the plane is to not thank Boeing for their service. They're there with us for a lifelong relationship. Um, so one of the things that, that I really pushed our, our agency to do was really to work together. And there's no entity that knows the ServiceNow product better than ServiceNow. Uh, so, so that was the, a, a very important thing for me to help kind of drive the transformation that as we were transforming ourselves, we were truly understanding what, what the product can and cannot do, um, which is a, a second thing. It's not directly related to your question, but I've too often seen us try to make software do things that it wasn't designed to do in the first place, and then we get frustrated with it. Uh, so we, we very much tried to focus on, on uh, um, leveraging the out-of-the-box capability. Uh, our, our agreement that we have actually gave, gave us access to the impact squad. So for those of you who don't, if you have that, I'd encourage you to use it. Um, let let the, the, the service now and your contract partners uh, um, 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 advise and assist you. And at the end of the day, you know, I, I think the biggest thing about the, the having to have a strengthened relationship, you have to start with a relationship, right? And start building that relationship and, and, and be both everybody really having the, the, the courage, I call it the moral courage, to want to change and to want to change together and to want to accept the fact that some things are going to work great, some things aren't going to go so well, and, and uh, you just kind of keep plugging at it and, and it's just to create the environment where candid conversations can occur um, with the idea that this is all about getting better. Um, I think sometimes in government, sometimes we, we put our regulatory hats on too often and it's like, you know, we want to protect ourselves and we want to make sure, you know, who do we point the finger at if things don't go wrong. Um, in my job, I'm, a, I'm part of the leadership at DCSA, so I'm like, well, just point it at me, right? Let's just figure out how to get things done. But I think the biggest thing about the, the, the strength and partnership was all sides really from our, our, our folks who were participating in Innovation Day to our program office personnel to, to, to um, the folks in my office, we're, we're all, all about wanting to get better and wanting to do it, do things together. Yes, sir. So I think the, the lesson here is lean in, right. uh, set boundaries, set expectations, both sides, but lean in. And that's how you get the most out of each other. Um, we are tasked to do a lot as a vendor and a vendor that supports you. And you are tasked to do a lot, oftentimes with not a lot. Um, look at us as an extension of your team. We may not be able to do everything that you can do, but we can certainly give you some ideas. And sometimes ideas are, are where the magic happens. Um, Bob, I, I want to thank you for spending time with us today. Sure. Uh, it's been uh, awesome just to hear you talk through your journey. Um, and again, the important thing here is we have not talked about product. 
We've talked about the value of a platform to a business that has a problem. That is powerful. So we have five minutes. That's pretty good, man. Right with five minutes. Uh, we have five minutes to take a few questions. So if you guys have questions, raise your hand up. We have somebody with the mic that's going to run it up to you. Um, and we are happy to take any questions, comments, or concerns. OK, we must have done pretty good. Oh, we got one. All right. Open the floodgates. Hello. My name is Dan Hawkins. I'm with Deloitte. So I just have a quick question. So you said the success, and I was a former senior executive in the, in the government as well. So are these contractors that are doing this work that you're so successful with, or are they government employees that you're so successful with? Good question. It's all the above. That is fantastic. Right. OK, no more questions for me. Right. But it's, it's um, you know, I'll say that it is all the above. It's like, like bringing everybody together that knows what they're good with to, to kind of work towards a, a common problem. Um, you know, someday we are hoping that, that our, our gatekeepers are going to be able to do a lot more of this type of work on the, by themselves, right? And so I think maybe some of these other enhancements that are coming out, they're going to allow that. Um, but but because uh, I think it's a challenge in, in government, particularly we were talking about some of the stuff upstairs with the IT skills. Is uh, uh, government can't pay at the same as industry when it comes to some of these things? So I mean, I think that's something that, that uh, has been actually been impressed upon me today. Like we got to noodle through that some more, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think that roadmap I was talking about. I mean, I already know I got to look at that upskilling lane because I think there's a few more things we need to do. But yeah, it's a partnership, and, and we brought everybody together. We got another one. Oh, he's loud. He doesn't need it. So with your successes, uh, did you strictly stick to out of the box, no customizations, or did you allow some sort of customization? Yeah. Um, well, again, the agency came together, and there were various pieces of, of ServiceNow implementations that were, were in effect. Um, that's why I mentioned about looking at the, the you know, leveraging impact if you have it. Um, we actually uh, I just glossed over this on my, on my question about the roadmap and guiding principles. For all of our delivered apps, um, we, we actually asked the impact team, it's still ongoing, to take a look, right? Look under the hood, see how these things were, de were configured. Are we aligned with best practice or not? Um, I also didn't mention we, we recently converted to an enterprise license. Uh, we had started under the fulfiller model. So, so we, we knew we were using different license types, probably not the correct way. Um, so yeah, we, there are, you know, I think it's, a, it's an interesting question, and it's almost like a point in time. Our goal is to leverage out of the box, right? but I can't tell you that it's completely that way, because that's probably not true. <laughs> so there's a, there's a difference between customization and configuration, and I think it's an important distinction to make. I hear it all the time. Everybody's like, don't customize. We're like, yeah, don't customize. Get out of the global scope. Stop messing around down at that level. However, configuration, scoped apps, Nothing wrong with that. Uh, and Bob and his team, they've, they've certainly threaded the needle on how to do right by both sides of the equation. And it's not about buy or build. It's about the power to choose either one, whichever's best for you, regardless of what your vendor says, ServiceNow included. Pick what's best for you, the customer. So any other questions? So I want to know, does, uh, have you ever run into the problems like that you use a lot of ServiceNow uh, platform pro products, right? Do you run into the cost for the licensing cost versus the like tightening the budget? I think every agency has a tighter and tighter budget. So want to know that's what's your take on, I mean, have you ever encountered that your budget have been cut and then, but your licensing costs have been rising and how do you address th those issues if you encounter that? So the, the, your question is, is kind of how the, the in all IT, the costs keep going up versus as opposed to the, the, the downward pressure on the budget? Like basically, ServiceNow has a fantastic product, right? So if right. you use a lot of product, that means that you use a lot of license, uh, and then which you have to pay for it. Right. And then with the increasing like the budget scrutiny, I mean, have you ever run into the problems that you know that your budget has been decreasing, but you buy more ServiceNow product, your licensing costs have been increasing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a good question. So again, we're a, we're a fairly new agency uh, to geek out on budget a little bit. Uh, we actually are funded with appropriated funds and working capital funds. So some of our kind of, you know, the underside of what we're, our journey is actually figuring out how to cost share um, because we have service, we have things that we do as an agency that we charge customers for 
So we actually have a, a means, if you will, to generate revenue under the working capital fund or revolving fund. Um, but then we also have appropriated funds, and then you know something a government audience is very interested in is making sure we <laughs> not use one for another purpose, right? Um, so so uh, uh, and our working capital fund uh, is 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 uh, you know it's a it's a rate base, and we have to go through a defined process. Um, so I, I'd say right now, as a newly formed agency, the, the short answer is is no. But but I think we're going to face those pressures in the future. Um, but I think the other thing is to kind of to, to, to tie onto that, and it's something that, that we still need to work on within our agency, is if we make a big investment, right, we need to leverage that investment, right, to squeeze as much out of it as we can. Right? And so and, and that's, that, that's, that's kind of where I am um, as, as we, if we jumped in. I mean, that's been kind of a theme today. Um, we're trying new things. We want to get better. We're making this investment. So, so uh, as, as long as we have this investment, let's leverage it and try to squeeze out of it as much as we can. So that is it. Um, but this is service now, and it's Fed Forum. And I can't miss the opportunity to, at very least, say the word Gen AI one time during this conversation. <laughs> so thank you for coming. We appreciate you. Have a good day.